Commissioner uh, Yower. Here. Commissioner Rosales. Here. Judge Shaw's here. Commissioner Duke. Here. Commissioner Schindel. Here. Carol Susie with the County Clerk's Office. Here. Please stand and join us in opening prayer and say thank you for the allegiance. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance as we make decisions for the county today. We also ask that you uh, please lift up the Rodriguez family and be with them as they go through this horrible time that they're going through. Please be with our citizens as they travel through these horrid roads. Pray for safety. Please, dear God, bless our troops wherever they may be. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Daily's item and on Cop Sync and on these guys, I'd like to move them through. Is there anybody that wants to speak on those items? Well, actually, Jennifer, too. Jennifer needs to get back to uh, number eight. Let's skip to number eight. And we're going to go to discuss, approve, disapprove for claiming the month of April 2013 as National Sexual Assault Awareness and Proclamation Month in Carnes County and allow county judge to execute the proclamation. Good morning, Jennifer. Welcome back. Good morning, Judge. Thank you. Would you like me to read the proclamation? Please. <laughs> Whereas every two minutes another person in the United States is sexually assaulted, and in Texas one in five women and one in 20 men are victims of sexual assault. Whereas according to a study conducted by the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault and the University of Texas at Austin School of Social Work, apparently one point, approximately 1.9 million Texans have been sexually victimized. Whereas most victims are sexually assaulted by someone they know, and only 20% of rapes are ever reported to the police. Whereas it is appropriate to salute the more than 20 million victims who have survived sexual assault in the United States and the efforts of victims, volunteers, and professionals who combat sexual assault. <coughs> Whereas national community organizations and private sector supporters should be recognized and applauded for their work in promoting awareness about sexual assault. Whereas police, forensic workers, and prosecutors should be recognized and commended for their hard work and innovative strategies to increase the percentage of sexual assault cases that result in the prosecution and incarceration of offenders. Whereas sexual violence is a persistent and pervasive problem in our society, one that requires attention year-round, and in order to foster healthy communities, all citizens must support the effort to end sexual violence every month of the year. And whereas national community organizations, businesses in the private sector, and the media are urged through national sexual assault awareness of sexual violence and strategies to decrease the incidence of sexual assault. Now, therefore, we, the undersigned, do hereby proclaim the month of April as National Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month in Carnes County, and all citizens to observe this month by supporting the goals and ideas of victims and those working toward awareness and prevention and by participating in community. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for all the work you guys do for Pines County. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll make the motion to approve as written. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. That's for you, Jennifer. Thank you. Be careful on the road on the way back. Blessings. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Let's skip over to Lorraine real quick so we can get you back out of here. Number 12. Okay. That's going to be discussed except the March 27, 2013 Phase 2 Environmental Site Assessment, additional assessments, building A and C except the remediation and additional testing proposals attached and authorized the work to be completed. And that's Lorraine. Okay. And we did receive the, um, the latest analysis on the Phase 2 Environmental. And the good news is our entire site is clear. We can demolish all of the buildings except for building A and C. Building A is where the original gin was. Building C is the building that's just south of Mr. Malloy. So it's outside of our building footprint, but it's still on our site. Um, what's necessary for building A is there are hazard, there's hazardous dust in building A that needs to be remediated. And I have a cost proposal from Green Environmental, who is a company that specializes in this work. Um, 
for $4,720, and we'd like to get, what we want to do is get all the hazardous materials abated outside the scope of the general contractor, so when he mobilizes on site, he has a clean site, and he can demolish those buildings without having to deal with hazardous um, waste. And it, and doing this directly, contracting directly with Green Environmental will save the county money because there is a 10 or 15 percent markup, like if we ran it through Chapman Engineering, who did all the reports, um, they would charge a 10 or 15 percent markup, and I asked them um, if they needed to monitor anything, and they said, yes, their proposal still covers the monitoring, but if we contract directly with them, we save that markup, and then the, it's really just to handle the invoicing, which can come through my office and not have to pay them an extra, um, you know, 10 or 15 percent markup. So that's why I'm recommending we just contract directly with Green Environmental, save any kind of markup through a general contractor or through Chapman Engineering, and then let Chapman Engineering still provide the environmental engineering services to clear the site for us and file the reporting that needs to be done as a separate proposal. What type of dust is this? This is arsenic. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, arsenic is the problem with building A. So we have dust in, in A, which I have a proposal of the 4,720 to let Green Environmental take care of that. Then we also have, when we, um, when Roden Bridge cleared things around for us to take more sampling, there was a, a cistern, which they really call it a sump, but we've been calling it a cistern, in the ground, and it had a lot of um, fluid in it, and they sampled that fluid, and the liquid in there has arsenic also, so that has to be pumped out. The um, sump or cistern actually has to be removed from the ground, and... Um, and, and disposed of as hazardous materials, and that's a proposal of 10,586 um, from Green Environmental also. The, um, then once that cistern or sump is removed from the ground, Chapman has to go back and test the soils under the cistern to see if we have to do anything with those soils. So um, the third proposal that we had included in this agenda item is a not to exceed not to exceed proposal of $5,100. This covers the oversight of, of the remediation of the two items I just discussed from Green, all of the reporting that needs to be done, actually clearing the site and giving us the authorization to demolish that building, as well as the additional sampling that we need to do underneath that cistern to see if those soils need any more attention. Um, since building A is within the development footprint, I would like to get Green Environmental out as soon as possible to go ahead and get these um, hazardous materials remediated so that it won't affect our start date on our, um, on our jail, um, which hopefully will be in June of this year. Um, it takes them about two weeks to, um, it'll be only a two-day process and, it, and their schedule is about two weeks out. So if I can get them to um, the authorization today we would hopefully have this remediated before the end of the month. And this is all budgeted, correct? It's all yes, ma'am. This is, this is part of our, our allowance that we had in our, in our jail budget, which previously occurred. And this is a total of $20,000? Yes, sir. $20,000. $15,000 plus or minus for the remediation, and then another $5,000 not to exceed for the additional testing and documentation from the engineers. Okay. Um, then Building C requires some additional testing. There were 12, um, we need 12 soil samples taken from um, six sample locations to delineate the amount of um, pesticides. There's some organochlorine pesticide, taxophene, and gamma BHC that were both, once that building, building C is um, the one that we actually demolished already so that we could test underneath it. And the test underneath resulted in these organochlorine pesticides. Um, to access the deeper soils, um, Chapman's asking if Roden Bridge can have a backhoe available and a backhoe operator, and they'll show them where to dig and take the samples, but it'll save us having to get a drilling rig or another piece of equipment out there. So if we can coordinate with Roden Bridge and see if they can um, give us a time when they could be available on site to just get the backhoe and Chapman will tell them where they need to dig. The additional sampling and testing that we need at Building C is a not to exceed price of $7,900 for the professional fees for that. Um, this building is outside our building footprint and outside our parking lot area. So no matter what these additional testing show, we can just 
you know, cordon off that area and deal with it while we're building our building and it won't delay the jail, which is good news for us. Um, uh, but we still do need to get the additional testing done to get this last um, area cleared on the site. So that is $7,900. So I have the, the, the four proposals um, for Chapman and Green Environmental that I would like to um, have approved so we can move forward with getting our site clear of hazards. So this is going to come up to a total of 27.9, with almost 30,000 between the two? About, yes ma'am. Okay. But it's all budgeted in review? This is budgeted in uh, our, yes. And if anything is found by Chapman under all these, it's going to even go further, right? It's going to be more costly? Yes, on the, yeah, we have like two more items. Yeah, we have two more items that, um, that could possibly cause one last time for me, hopefully, to stand here. And it's if they if they find anything under the cistern or sump when that's removed, we'd have to remediate those soils. And if Building C, um, once they take these additional samples, that'll tell us what we need to do with Building C on how how we have to proceed. When I'm testing prior, job take the sample in those areas around that sump. <coughs> They went around it, but they did not go under it, of course. So yes, they've taken several weeks. This is, I think, the third, you know, the third proposal because what they did is they started out just doing some uh, shallow sampling all over the site to determine where they had to go further. And then where we had to go further, which was around building A and around building C, we went <coughs> farther. So there's, there's not a chance that that water has mitigated out away from the sun? If the what well that's they need to get underneath to tell that yeah the the sampling they've done around says the entire site is cleared with the exception of the sump and inside the building whatever they found around the sump to the level that they tested was fine so but once the sump's gone then that's going to be the next <coughs> they have to do. chances are chances are when they get that sump out that we're going to have to do something underneath it but I guess it depends how um, how contained that some point. Should be pretty contained. Like the commissioner said over here, if it's not a lumber, well, that means yeah, it just stopped down yeah. straight down. Yeah. Unless it was cracked just at the bottom or something and it just went deep, deep, deep. So, yeah. so, um, <coughs> so we're almost at the end of our, of our remediation so. and the hazards on this site. And but it is, I'm, I'm encouraged that it's not going to keep us from moving forward with our construction. Mm -hmm. Because um, unless what they find at the sump delays things in a minor way, but there's still we can still get mobilized and get started. Um, it appears. So it's holding. Can, can they hear us back there? Because they had a problem last week. Can everybody hear us? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll do it. Okay, Lorraine, we can move to number 13, authorize DSA to issue Kearns County Jail contract documents for bidding. Okay, well actually, 
13, 14, 15, 16, and 18 were, were actually last week, or last court meeting. So I don't know how those got back on again, if my office sent, you they know, reset them. Reset them but and so I thought something might be I wrong. I apologize. Need to redo. So All which ones need to go? 13, 13 14, 15, 16, and 18. So I apologize if we reset those. And Sylvia actually brought that to my attention, and I said, well, it might be something happened, and we did call and get a return apologize. call. So I told her, I said, just put it back on the yeah, agenda. Yeah, thank you. So I thought that would be rather be safe than sorry. And that would be the best way. Number 17 okay. then. So we're going to, uh, Carol, that's 13, 14, 15, okay. 16, and 18. Okay. 17, review and approve any modifications to the Carnes County Courthouse pain analysis proposal at the March 28th meeting. We did get this from Restoration Associates. Is that what this is? Yes, ma'am. And she called because she said that depending on the amount of plaster, there might be some demolition. Uh, some demolition they have to do in order to do their paint analysis to get back down through the cement plaster and so I put this on the agenda because she wouldn't know until after it was too late she notified me yesterday that her proposal is not changing so we can just um, no action on is needed on that none no action there. okay yes all right even no action there. Easy. Yeah, I uh, accompanied him on a side visit, mm -hmm. and she said it's pretty straightforward that everything is where they can get to it. So there shouldn't be anything coming. Yes. Was it? Okay, that was it then. Thank you so, Thank much. You Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lying, be careful. We appreciate um, it. Can I bring, do you want me to pick those copies up from Sylvia next time? If she'll make them right now. You'll sign them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just if you'll just walk around and hand them to Tito. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sheriff. Where are you? Your number nine. That's the presentation on your Commission of Jail Standards Inspection, which I put you all a copy in there. I have an extra copy of theirs. You want to look? No, I, have I know you know yes. it. Yeah, the, this one, let y'all know, Jail Inspector George Johnson was here last Tuesday. Uh, he uh, did our Jail Inspector check all the housing, the prisoners, classification. And the booking, how we book him, and we all passed. We had no deficiencies. <coughs> We're good for another year. Good. Okay. Thank you, sir. And you know, we got a, a nice letter for a change from the Commissioner of Jail Standards. Did you get your copy? Yes. It says that GEO is operating very well, and they're very happy. And, and like, oh, well, you know, I make her stuff. <coughs> anyway, I'm not used to getting nice letters. We got a nice letter, so I just wanted to point that out while you're standing up there. The next one is going to be. Presentation and demonstration of CopSync law enforcement software. And that's your representative there. This, I have uh, Patrick here from CopSync uh, law enforcement, and he's here to do the presentation on the uh, CopSync, the laptops, and computer software system that we want to uh, uh, get for the sheriff's office. Thanks, Sheriff. Sure. Judge, Commissioners, thank you for uh, allowing me to present CopSync to you today. Uh, just real quick here, I want to show you our presence in the state of Texas, and if you notice, you're pretty much surrounded. And the reason Carnes County is green on that map is because the city of Kennedy and the city of Carnes City also uses Coptic and have been using it for a couple of years. Uh, so everybody pretty much around you is using our system. And uh, like the sheriff said, we are all law enforcement, so we basically have been in the system for other law enforcement. We went out and we said, what do you want? And we, we made it. Um, a little quick history of our company, if you've ever been on uh, eBay and you look at a car, eBay Motors, the same two gentlemen that invented eBay Motors invented Coxie. So they owned the uh, two police officers owned a side company called CarAd.com, which eBay acquired and made, uh, made uh, eBay Motors. So there's a lot of history in our company, a lot of professional uh, people involved. Uh, so this represents today about 360 agencies live on Coxie. And what that means is if I'm in Allen County up there by Amarillo and I travel down here to Carnes County, whoever deals with me in Carnes County in law enforcement knows every single thing that Allen County dealt with me for. Okay, so no more of this information not following us around. So think of think of this as pre-adjudicated information. So if I've been arrested, you can run my criminal history and you can see that I've been arrested 20 times. But if I'm being investigated, there's really no database that shows that I'm being investigated, right? So uh, if, if I'm being investigated for, uh, I keep hanging around McDonald, uh, McDonald's playgrounds and the managers keep running me off because I'm acting <coughs> weird, well, now everybody on Cop Sync knows all that history, 
right? So that follows us. So now we can see pre-adjudicated information. We can see kind of behavior. If I'm still in Copper and Atascosa County, and I come over here to Carnes County, they know that I've been still in Copper over there in Atascosa County. So they're probably going to look in the bed of my pickup and see if it's full of Copper. Does that make sense? So this is the only system in the world that does that, other than Interpol, which we don't have access to Interpol in America. So. Uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration of what TopSync does. And also, uh, before I finish today, I'm going to show you a, a brand new product, which is SchoolSync. So, real quick, you see everybody on that map right there? Now we can include all of the schools um, in it, and I'll show you how we can do that real fast. So I apologize, I'm going to sit down here while I can navigate. Why were some of the counties in yellow and some of them were green and yellow? Is so, yellow, uh, for instance, uh, this one's mine, uh, Matter County. Matter County has been approved by their commissioners. They've been uh, approved for funding, and they're just waiting for that funding to kick in. They actually had some uh, some border money, federal border money, that helped pay for a portion of this, and they're just waiting for that to kick in. So, uh, basically, at our company, if you have a letter of intent signed and you're coming on, and we have you in the queue, we turn you yellow. Uh, Star County is actually green now. They've already come on, so this map's a little outdated. They've been on for quite some time. We actually have some Cameron County agencies, so that needs to be green as well. Just this map's a little outdated, so we move so rapid. So just uh, I don't always have the most current map on here. So Copsync's going to allow the sheriff's office now to have what we call TLETs, uh, Texas Law Enforcement Telecommunication System, which basically allows them to run driver's license and license plates right from their vehicle or their desktop. And keep in mind, too, this is not only going to be in the vehicles, this is going to be in all the computers at the sheriff's office. So we, we're not going to charge if they put it on a thousand computers. We're just going to charge for that those seats, that, <coughs> the license that are using those, those computers. Now, I think the commissioner saw this a quick demonstration uh, week at the uh, county commissioner show. Okay. So uh, we're going to be able to access all your uh, license plates, all your driver's license. CopSync also has an e-citation module, so all the citations now are going to be written electronically, and this printer is included in the system. So if you've ever seen kind of like a grocery receipt, this is a four-inch roll, and it prints out on these. Um, so they're all going to be written electronically. Basically, when you swipe the driver's license, it takes all that information and carries over to your citation. So everything's electronically. At the end of the year, the racial profiling stats by a click of three buttons can be produced. Y'all well know you get presented the racial profiling st stats every year, so that's extremely accurate. Uh, so that's a that's a big uh, time saver. Now this has law reference, so every two years the sheriff's office buys uh, uh, criminal law books that have all the new published laws. Well, we, we include this in it uh, at no extra charge. So every two years you're getting the updated laws electronically. Now we're going to write all our criminal trespass warnings now in Copsing. They'll also pr uh, print out on our printer right here. Uh, what that means is, now that we can see the history of all the individuals, if they've been criminal trespassed anywhere on the network, we see that information. So it carries, it follows you. Uh, down here, Messenger. Everybody on our network right here, which you see, can talk to each other real time. So if I'm up here in Dallas County and I come down here to Orange County, I can talk to those people real time. So everybody around us, everybody on the network can talk to each other. Uh, this completes a daily activity log automatically for you, so just by navigating through the uh, fields here, uh, this is going to populate our daily activity log for us. So at the end of the day or the end of the year or 10 years from now, we can see what we've done activity-wise uh, in, in cop scene. Not only this, the chief deputy, the sheriff, or the patrol sergeant can actually sit at his desk or in his patrol bar and watch what that deputy is doing real time. If he just went to a call, he just checked out on traffic stop. He just wrote a criminal trespass warning. Now that other person sees that information real time. They don't have to go query some databases. They just click on his log and they can click on the link and open it up. So um, it's extremely efficient. In CopSync, we can um, complete all our offense reports, warrant arrests, incident, supplement, DWI, as well as crash reports. Uh, makes it extremely um, Simplified. Basically, when we're swiping the driver's license or we're entering the person's name and date of birth, it carries all the TLETS information over to our report, so we don't have to keep redundantly putting all the same information in over and over. As well as, if anybody else has dealt with that person in the entire network, 
as soon as they run that person, that information comes up. Okay, so that's one thing in law enforcement we do. We redundantly write the person's name, address, word, you know, keep writing, writing this thing over and over and over and over. So it kind of slows us down. Uh, the AVL is called Auto Vehicle Locating. So now the sheriff is literally going to be able to see where any of his vehicles are at any time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. He'll be able to see how fast they're going. He'll be able to see what direction they're going. He'll be able to see what kind of calls are on. As well as our AVL is a uh, communications tool. So uh, if uh, you want to uh, talk to any of these units, simply you just click on them. And I'm running off the uh, Wi-Fi here in this building, so I'm kind of getting that. Four signals, so it's running just a tight and a tad bit slow. Uh, but we'll be able to communicate. You can click on any of those vehicles and you can send an instant message back and forth. As well as let's say we have a let's say we have a kidnapping and, and we want to notify every law enforcement agency in the area on Cop Seek immediately. Here's all we have to do. We just take this right here and we highlight as big as areas we want, and it captures all those officers and we're able to send an instant message. If any of you ever saw the Ken's Five news story about Gonzales County child abduction, Copsink helped capture that three-year-old from, from recover that three-year-old from its capture. Okay, um, there was a, a three-year-old that was abducted from her, her grandmother's front yard. Uh, that vehicle was on I-10 headed back to Houston from Gonzales County, and a Weimer police officer on Copsink saw the bolo be on the lookout and recovered that child. So that's the power of being able to notify everybody immediately what's going on. Typically now what we do is uh, we, we file a report, we send it to Amber, uh, the DPS, the, the, the Amber contact for Amber Alerts, and it's three or four hours and we get Amber Alert out. But really Amber Alert is kind of the public's version of notification. Law enforcement, we have teletypes and we put them out on the radio and things like that. But now we're just going to put a huge broadcast out and send that information out instantly and get that out. So if you ask me the best feature in CopSync, I'm going to tell you ABL because it, it, it improved communications substantially. And you can, you can just imagine 360 agencies today working close together, how much better cooperation will be in law enforcement. That's the scary secret about law enforcement. We don't share information really real time. Um, we don't really kind of know what each other's doing. So this is a... This is going to help uh, improve those communications dramatically. Uh, security checks, we're, we're going to write all those in Copsing now. They go out and they, they check buildings at night or do vacation watches. We're going to do those electronically. Now we can provide logs and, and see history. And the sheriff could even print out a log and give it to the homeowner, business owner, and see every time that deputy's checked their residence. Civil process, they're going to be able to keep track of all the civil process now. And I see somebody from the DA's offices here, and I, we actually pr presented to them too. And also, we're going to provide a, uh, a copy of this to the DA's office, so the DA's office in Carnes County will be able to communicate a little bit better too. And I think uh, that's going to help uh, help tremendously too. Uh, these are all. You had you said like the, uh, the your 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 checks. Uh huh. What is built in there to say that they don't just go ahead and put the I went there, but I didn't know that. Okay, so anything in CopSync is trackable, right? So we have a GPS unit that's built into CopSync that sits on, it's, a, it's an antenna that sits on the dash. The sheriff at any time can see that archive history. If I'm one of his patrol deputies, he can literally see where I've been my last shift, my last three shifts ago. Now he has history, because that, that happens, unfortunately, law enforcement. I may come in as a citizen. Sure, if I want to file a complaint on one of your deputies because he was sitting in Waterburger for three hours and I don't think that's that's proper because I'm a taxpayer. Well, literally the sheriff can see that history and see where that deputy was for those three hours. Okay, if he's sitting in Waterburger, the sheriff knows he's got a problem. But if the deputy wasn't, he knows that that's you know that's that's not true, and he can protect protect the integrity of the, the county board, <coughs> right? So. Uh, at any time, he can get that archive history and see where that vehicle is going. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Um, so these are bolos right here. And this, keep in mind, this is a, a demo version of CopSync, so it's, it's not live data. But the bolos are published right here. And any of the officers or deputies or dispatchers or anybody on the system can, can publish these bolos. And it's kind of like a stock ticker. They just keep adding them, and it just keeps filling up this list right here. 
But the neat thing is, is anytime we check out on one of these vehicles or run these vehicles, license plates, no matter who put it in, that Bolo pops up and shows us, hey, uh, uh, you know, uh, Moore County and Abbey Amarillo is looking for this vehicle or looking for this person. I'm going to run a registration here and just kind of show you the example of our data sharing and our history, how simple it is to access to the network, right? So it's a big network and it's everybody pushing information. This vehicle right here is entered into a BOLO, so somebody's looking for this vehicle, but if it was a person that was wanted or a vehicle was stolen, this is what happens. It literally goes out and picks the five closest patrol units within a 50 mile radius to my location and notifies them that I just checked out with that threat, plus dispatch, plus the sheriff gets a text message on his cell phone, knowing that one of his deputies just checked out with a wanted person, stolen car, or whatever, right? So that's called distance-based alerting. And that's patented in Copsing. So we're going to see the actual BOLO here. This is what pops up in everybody else's vehicle. And all five units are listed right here. If they don't know where I'm at, they can click on threat location and see exactly where I'm at on the map to come help me. Okay. You may have said it, and I may have missed it, but what does BOLO stand for? Be on the lookout. It's just an acronym for be on the lookout. So we, we, enter, we enter a BOLO to let everybody else know, hey, look out for this person, threat, crime, trend, intelligence, whatever it is it may be. So this is the actual return here that's going to come back. And again, I apologize. I'm running, I think I'm, this is the JT's uh, in there right now. It's hard to hear from there, but it's actually talking back to you. It's giving it back to you like a dispatcher. So when you're driving down the road, you don't have to sit there and watch it. You can just listen to the return come across. What we do in Cops Inc., which is very unique also, is this is a T-Let's return for a license plate. And you know if you go get your tags renewed or, or you know, on your, on your vehicle or trailer or whatever, you, the, uh, the clerk that's renewing your license sees the exact same thing. So it has a lot of information in here, like you know, the amount and things. Well, not particularly in law enforcement, we really, really want to see that on the fly. So what we do is we populate these boxes up here. This is the information we want to see, and we want to see it real fast. So we just put it up here where you can look at it. But uniquely is, if this was a Kansas license plate, well, that let's return from Kansas looks totally different than Texas. But we still take that information that the, people want, the officer wants to see and put it in these blocks up here so it's extremely simple to, to, to view. Uh, it tells you if it has insurance or not, so this checks the Texas insurance database. So you know, just by simply running a license plate from utilized insurance. But this is Top Sync. This link right here, anytime you click on this link on a person or vehicle, it will show you every single time that person or vehicle has been handled by whatever agency. Okay, for instance, this person named Brandon Thomas was driving this vehicle on this date and this time. He got a speeding citation. So one step further, we can literally see the speeding citation that was written to Brandon Thomas by any other agency. Right there, that fast. So you see the deputy doesn't have to go out and query all these databases and get all this information. It's just right there. As well as the DA's office, if they want to run somebody, they can look up and see their history right there. They don't have to go query all these databases and put all this information in. It's right there. As well as you get access to the officer's notes at the bottom. Okay, so that's important to show you because that's, that's the network and that's how the information is shared real time. So let me scoot over here to a school scene. And we just launched this and uh, now, in fact, Atascosa County is actually going to be one of the very first agencies uh, to do this, and there's going to be some press on this, and you'll see this coming out in the news. But what we did in CopSync is we've always had an officer needs assistance button, or when you check out with a wanted person or stolen vehicle, you know how it goes out and picks those five closest units, and it notifies them that that threat. Well, we took that module and separated it, and now we call it school scene. So could you imagine every single one of your schools Every single one of their computers in Carnes County can now have this little icon on the bottom of their desktop on any computer. Anytime a teacher administrator hits that button, it will literally pick the five closest patrol units regardless of jurisdiction. So being Kennedy PD, Carnes PD, you know, Carnes SO, it will notify those deputies immediately that there's a problem in that classroom at that school. Okay? So we we know by our research and being in law enforcement that when there's an incident at a school, we pick up this phone and call 911. If everybody did their job perfectly, there's going to be a delay. 
There's going to be a big gap there, up to 10 minutes sometimes, okay? So if we can notify those deputies that are in that area, they're already, if they're far away, I'm telling you, they're already heading over there. If they're close, they're already there because they're getting the information. Is there, there a chance that that same button could be on the county computers as a treasurer's office, the tax office, JPs, the probation? Absolutely. It's called Cops in Time One, and it does the same thing. So if I'm a JP out in a rural location, a remote location, I don't have security 24 hours a day, but if I hit that button, the sheriff's office knows that there's a problem there. Absolutely. Matter of fact, in uh, Moore County, we just we just signed a contract. They're putting in every single one of their county county buildings. They have an annex and they have an older courtroom that has like the the district uh, court and things like that in it. With the contract that you're looking at today and what you're looking at, does that include the schools? It does. But the county offices would be an additional. It would be. It would be. It would be an addition, and it would be uh, uh, depending on how many buildings we wanted to put it in. Um, it could be somewhere in the neighborhood about ten thousand dollars to do that for the entire county. Just kind of a rough idea because I, I I've done a couple so, uh, but Carnes County is not you know they don't have hundred county offices so, but uh, the school alert actually even pops up a little uh, a little chat room here. And the school uh, administrator or teacher can literally talk back and forth to that deputy that's responding or the people in the front office. The principal, the administrators can send out an alert, lock the doors, so all the teachers in the, in the school gets it. You know, so I'm related to a school teacher. I have children in school. We all do. We're all involved in school. Uh, we have to do something to be able to notify those police a little bit more efficiently that there's a problem at school. I mean, that's just, it's just, it just is. We already had that kind of built in Copsy because we already alert the officers that other officers need assistance. So why not just put that in the school? It, it makes so much sense. And uh, it's going to be extremely, extremely uh, uh, proficient. It's going to help those uh, schools do that. Now, we don't charge anything for the county to have that. As a matter of fact, we're going to provide that to the schools in Farnes County for no charge. So uh, they're going to be one of the first and then uh, get kicked off. But this is, this, you're going to start seeing national press on this, and y'all are going to be on the forefront of it. Uh, so you have a proposal in front of you. Um, and what we've done in, in talking to the sheriff and the chief is, uh, is uh, Cop Sink is never in the right place at the right time, okay, for, for lack of a better term. So we, we have to come in right when you're doing your budget or, or you know, getting ready for your next budget. So what we do at Cop Sink is, is, is we take the total amount, and keep in mind is that the, the large percentage of your, your cost here is hardware because we need to get some computers in those patrol vehicles to make this uh, uh, system very efficient, right? It would be nice to have them in the office, but it's even better to have them out in the patrol vehicle. So we can. So there's a, the huge cost involved here is, is hardware based. So, so what we've done is we've taken the total amount of what it's going to cost to get CopSync in here, and we've included four years of software fees and all your hardware, which is warranted for four years. And we've taken that and we've split it up in four payments. Not only that, we know, again, we're, all, we're never in the right place at the right time. That's just county government, right? So we def we'll defer that first payment out for a whole 12 months. So you don't even have to worry about making your first payment until your next budget cycle. So, I mean, that's really the only way you can take a large purchase and come in here and we, and we figure that out. And we've done that in out of space and I've done that. I'm a former police chief and I had, I, I had cops in my agency, and uh, this is exactly the way I had to do it too. So it, it's a it's a huge benefit to that. So um, two hundred fourteen thousand four hundred fifty one dollars is for four years. Yes, ma'am, for That's four years. Right. Because so we have an eight three fifty a year. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, with it, if you if you uh, multiply it with interest, it makes it uh, fifty nine oh sixty five nineteen a year. Because there is there is a small interest. Uh, of 3.99% uh, if you do take it for four years. So it makes it 59,065.19. Um, and again, that first 59,000 could be deferred up to 12 months. And I've actually seen it up to 18 months, but typically it's deferred up to 12 months. So uh, this includes, again, your software for four years, all your hardware in the vehicles, which is warranted for four years, installation, training, setup, 
Um, so this also includes our uh, in-car video system, which ties into to cop sync. So they're going to have all brand new video systems in these vehicles. Um, so this is a complete package. Uh, it's a turnkey solution, and uh, you know, we, we really want you guys on the network. What's the chances of Homeland Security grants? Have y'all joined? Are you Russell checking? We're, we're on the process working on that. ACOG, uh, that's how Corn City and Kenny got theirs that time because it was a Homeland Security grant that we had gotten. And for some reason, I don't know why the county didn't get in on anything. That's how the two got theirs. Mm -hmm. right. And I can tell you now, I'm in the field. I mean, I'm in the field every day. Grants are pretty much, they're not like they used to be. We, I mean, I got grants when I was an administrator. Uh, really, the only grants I see right now, there's a few grants on, on the border for border, what they call Operation Border Star. Which is FEMA money. It goes, it's it's uh, managed by U.S. Border Patrol and FEMA. I see some of that, but these JAG grants that we used to get coming from that were administrated through the governor's office, things like that, they're really not out there right now. Are we part of Border Star? Yes. And you're looking to get some philanthropy funds, right? Right. We've already talked to Dallas I submitted an application to them. The gentleman said he's about 99 percent sure that we can get seven thousand dollars. Oh yeah, he was in here the other day. And cool. then uh, I also have a grant application from Tonico Phillips. That as soon as it opens up, it will be submitted for more money from Tonico Phillips. Yeah, there there's a benefit for large energy energy companies to help law enforcement with this information because. In their sector, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of global terrorism they deal with, right? So they can help track individuals, oil field workers that move around, uh, you know, that move from location to location. So there's actually a benefit for law enforcement to have that that information to help the, the big energy companies as well. We see that quite often. I have a question for the sheriff. Would this enhance the efficiency of your deputies as far as time when they write out and we get these printed out and write like sheets? The so then they shouldn't have to sit there after a shift and write out a whole bunch of paperwork? Correct, because they can That's do correct. reports and everything in their vehicles. You know, they don't have to go drive back to the sheriff's office of the state. They can do it while on shift. You know, if they're in their vehicles and they have a report, they just did a disturbance call, they can sit in a parking lot, you know, and do their reports there. They don't have to go all the way back to the sheriff's office and be in the in the jail. You know, they can be out, if they do, you know, out in the parking lots. Uh, if they have to report. download that information to the time. Right, and it, yes, and I'm sure we can download. I mean, yes, it, the reports. I mean, you can type, do all your your reports and everything, and then as far as printing them out, do it at the SO. Your videos that transfers into this also. It does. So to answer his question. Um, Typically what happens, and uh, Deputy Cantu can help us achieve here, but, but typically what happens is if I'm five reports down, basically meaning I have five reports to write, I'm going to have to figure it out because the sheriff's not going to want me to have claim 10 hours overtime every day. So I'm going to have to figure out at the end of my shift what it's, how long it's going to take me to get those reports done. I'm literally going to come back to the sheriff's office and I'm going to sit there for those remaining hours and get my report done. What the sheriff said is, we go to a call, we're going to pull over, we're going to do that report, we're done. We're going to go to the next one, right? I worked in a large metropolitan area. I was 10 reports down. So for for the last three hours, there was one guy in my whole sector patrolling because we're all doing reports. So it does make it much more efficient. Now, what do you recommend is for your provider to, to operate this system because we'll have to provide their time. Right. Typically in this area, AT&T or Verizon works the best. Um, but like I tell everybody, use what works best for you because on the DIR contract, the state contract, they're the same price. There's no contracts. There's unlimited air time, and they give you the equipment for free. So use which one works the best. Typically, it's not always what cell phone works the best because data travels, you know, travels on a different link. You see an antenna. If you see an antenna, you can imagine the cell phone up here and the data, you know, halfway down. Kind of as a visual. Is there a way for the, if Corn City has it and Kennedy has it, and the, if Corn, if the county gets it, is there a way to, I guess, connect all of them with one big wireless repeater somewhere so we can get it, you know, the airtime? Really, to be honest with that? you, sir, the cell service is the most efficient and cheapest route. There is some cities, like the city of Hallettsville, they literally have a wireless mesh. So anywhere you go in the city, you have wireless internet. Like, like college campuses do the same thing. 
but efficiency and price wise you cannot beat $37.99 for an unlimited data point. It's just cheapest and the technology is so good. Plus, if you think about it, not only is TopSync encrypted, which is 256-bit encryption, which is like your online banking. If you use a cell card, like I have a MiFi card, these also include encryption. So it's nearly impossible to hack something like this because of the dual encryption. So it makes it a lot easier. If you had your own network, you would have to worry about somebody penetrating your own network, right? So. Judge. Um, and commissioners, on behalf of the DA's office, I'm Assistant DA Audrey Lewis, for those that I haven't met before. Um, and this is Tiffany McWilliams. She's actually going to be the ADA for Carnes County. Hello. We are here on behalf um, of the Sheriff's Office as well in this regard. Um, DA Renee Pena has agreed to pay for two of the units for the Sheriff's Office. Um, as part of trying to help out and assist in getting this system going. Um, we very much support it. Um, there are other counties, Atascosa, LaSalle, there's other counties in our jurisdiction that are already on it. And um, I cannot explain to you, I know a lot of what he says is very much kind of in cop terms and so some of that may not translate over real well, but the main thing which is so important to us in law enforcement and in the law enforcement community is the communication. Not only keeping these deputies out on the street versus sitting, nobody wants them sitting in the office typing up reports, that's not doing the community any good and making us any safer. If the longer they're able to be out doing their jobs, the better it is. But even bigger picture than that, um, these criminal enterprises that are kind of infiltrating our jurisdiction the only way that we can accurately combat that is to have Carnes County talking with Atascosa County, talking with Gonzalez County, talking with Guadalupe County, because they're not staying here. It's rampant. And the only way to do that is if we're all on board and communicating with one another, everybody's on the same page as to what type of person we're dealing with, and those guys know that when they're out in the field. I mean, it's an officer safety issue, but it's also just gives them so much more information to know who they're dealing with because it happens, unfortunately, frequently when they don't have something where they're all connected that they've stopped somebody for speeding and they may not know who they're dealing with. And this person is on the run from a robbery that he's committed three counties over. And if we're not connected, we don't know that. And they may slip right through their fingers and they keep on going. And so this allows that communication to continue. And then from our perspective, um, when we want to look at something and we've got a lawyer saying, you know, we've got this guy that's in custody and we'd like to work this out before he even gets, you know, indicted by a grand jury or whatever, is there something you can do? I can say, well, hold on, let me pull it up and I can look at the video of the stop. I can look and read the report. I can do everything right then. And if it's something where this guy wants to go to prison early, we're, we're going to welcome that. I mean, <laughs> so, um, so from our perspective, this is a, this is a welcome. We're, we're very much in support of trying to get all of these agencies kind of linked in together so that we can, you know, create a better system of communicating to fight the fight that we're all in this for. So. And you, brought up the, you brought up the exact point why we started TopSync is because even though we know there's 2,000 companies in the United States that build a records management system, not one of them talks to each other. Is this uploaded to the Fusion Center? Uh, actually, the Fusion Center actually downloads Download. Bolos to us, right? So we get Joy and we get Intel Bolos for the end. Uh, so that's that's a great point, yeah. As well as Epic. So when we run somebody's license plate, we see if that vehicle had a U.S.-Mexico border crossing or a lane check through Falfurius, Sarita, Brackettville, Sierra Blanca. We see if that vehicle crossed through there, and that helps a lot, too. So. I don't see anything bad about it. No, it's I all good. I think it's, it. it's, it's, a, it's a need. It's a need. If they choose not to finance for the four-year period, the upfront cost can still be deferred till our next budget year. Um, actually, no, it does have to be financed to do that. But if you wanted to do that and defer it, you would just have one year finance, right? So you would just have a lot smaller piece of interest. After the first year, if you wanted just to pay it off, you could do that. A lot of agencies do that. So, 
it, you, you're, there's no there's no early penalty to pay. So anytime you want to pay. Typically, what does it cost after the first four years? Is there a lot of upgrading? Uh, no, sir. After the first four years, the sheriff would reevaluate his hardware, which means computers, printers, things like that, and see if they needed to be, to be refreshed. Um, and then if they, they did not, then you would just pay the software fee, which is, um, is roughly about $75 in a deputy per month. So that's what it would cost after the four years. If the, if the sheriff may say, okay, all of these computers are pretty much, we've, we've, we've used these things, they're wore out, whatever, he could redo this thing again and just keep repeating this. But typically a computer, I've seen them last seven years, it just depends. The good thing about it is when you buy one from us is for the whole four years that you're in there, it has no fault warranty. If that thing falls off the roof and when they take it out of the car or drop it or they spill coffee on it, short, whatever, it's completely fixed. It includes the docking software and all? It does. It includes the docking station. It includes the mounting. Um, you know, basically, turnkey. I, I have one in my, my vehicle now that the sheriff's seen. Uh, we, we do all the installs and everything. The, camp, the computer, does it have a camera? It does. It has a webcam. This computer, literally, they can take it out, and it turns the lid, and they close it. It looks just like a tablet. It's, it's a very unique computer system. Uh, so literally, if they want to be out of their car, they can have it as a tap that working in an accident or whatever. Uh, but it mounts in the vehicle, it locks in there, they have to basically break the whole stand to get it out. So, it's built for a police car. I like it. Mm -hmm. This county's so spread out. Sir? Anything? Does this have a hot spot where you can drive up to the sheriff's car and get the button and grab all the video and stuff? It does have the capability, the Wi-Fi offload. Yes, sir, it does have the capability. Um, right now, the sheriff's elected to go with just the lower version, but that can be an upgrade if he wants to so choose to do that. I know now, I've got a hot spot. I had a hot spot mm -hmm. where I already just come up, get close to the sheriff's apartment, and get a button. Right. As well as the reports, they can literally upload those. We're a hosted solution, so there's no back end. They don't have to buy any servers and have all this infrastructure. We do all that for them. So if something's broke, it's on our end. We fix it. You know, you don't have to get your IT person out here to fix it. That's the beauty of cops and we're hosted. That's that's the beauty of being part of a network. We, we do the IT. We don't leave that up to you. So typically, you would buy a server and all this software and put it and leave it leave it in your agency, and you would have to maintain it. We do that. I think that's just a lot of technology for public safety. I make a motion that we well, approve cops. And, I'm sorry, you had something else to add? No, it's 10, you got to go read those. Oh, 11, okay, thank you for your presentation, sir. Number 11 is to discuss and to disapprove the purchase of cop sync, laptops, cameras, and software support to the Barnes County Sheriff's Office for total expense of 214451 to equip 17 Sheriff's Office vehicles with the payment deferred at fiscal year 2014 beginning October 2013. There is a possibility that the outside full term of monies to be obtained even for companies to also to purchase the expenses and allow a county judge to execute finance resolution, and that's our sheriff. And I make the motion to approve number 11 as written. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Five Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, Thank you. If you'll hand this one to Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let me go on your See that gentleman right there. Sorry, you know what I need? Mean? I need you to get a copy of the fully executed contract back to the sheriff so you can follow the county clerk. That one just stay in there until we get the other Yes, ma'am. Hold on, let me just do this one real quick. Okay, that. thank you. Sorry, I was. No, you're fine. Anything wrong. Carol, on this back page, I'm going to leave it open. I need you to sign it.
gentleman here on the road. Where is he at? Brenda, what number are you here? 31. 31? Okay. Let's move to number 31. And we have discuss, approve, disapprove the request of Sigmore Development Group for CSL commercial subdivision to use actual street names for private roads and private access easements, including those that were submitted by the City of Kennedy for their ETJ instead of the standard county road numbering system. And I have Raphael Arias and Brenda on that. Yep, but we actually have Mr. Mark Brown. That's okay. He's okay. Thieves from who works with TSL. Uh -huh. And they came to us a couple weeks ago to start getting their private roads in. Um, they're kind of in a unique situation. They're right outside of Kennedy. They're in an area that is probably going to be annexed, so they had to turn in road names. They assumed that they could use those road names when they came to us. Found out we're on a different system. They're asking if they can still use the names that they had to submit, which right now they have Broadway and Park Place. There's a possibility that we have to put a few more road names in. We're still working on all of that. But since it is um, on file that we should be using the numbering system, I ask that it comes to Commissioner's Court to get it approved for, uh, before we go forward on it. So this has not been annexed yet. It's no. in the ETJ. And I talked to the City of Kings. They said that they're looking at annexing it. It's probably at least one to two years out. They've got their closing deals right now. They've got lots ready to go. We've had at least one of the businesses in that subdivision come to us and ask for an address already. So they are needing so that that um, Studio 6 is a hotel. It's coming in. They're going to be in that subdivision. So it hasn't been annexed yet. I'm kind of confused about this one because I called the city of Kennedy this morning myself because I wasn't sure what we should do. Have you done anything like this before? Have no. you done anything like this before? Well, it, it does happen a lot because three or four years ago, everybody assumed you would be annexed immediately because everybody was annexing everything. That all changed and stopped. And now we find ourselves in the days a lot, but we know we're going to get annexed, so we'd rather not have to change all the addressing when it happens. And, and that's, the, that's the problem we're in is the city of Kennedy told us originally there would probably be a quick annexation. And then I think that changed, although it still might change again. So we had already started circulating our street names and all of our contracts were set up that way. So I told Brenda we'd really rather continue with those names, which would mean when it was annexed, everything would stay the same. If we switch it now to the county system and it gets annexed and we have to change it. So honestly, it's going to be trouble for you or trouble for us. There's probably not a... Is there any houses there? Does anybody have an address there? Yeah. There's one address there. It's set up as a temporary address right now. It's for a mobile site that they're using as an office. It's an older one. Once that, once the subdivision is in place, that mobile will move out and those lots are going to be sold. Um, no matter what, we're kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place because no matter how I number it right now, the numbering is going to change when the city... So I'm doing the work. No matter what, we're just hoping to prove this, that the businesses, they might have to change their numbering, but they won't necessarily have to change their street numbers, except for probably along 181, depending on how it's going to accept along the front. These are labeled the blue PRs, right? Yes. The only thing I would ask is since we just have the numbers, I would ask that they take on the expense of the lettering. We can provide the boards, but we don't have the letters. You know what? I have a question, but I know we couldn't get an immediate answer. Is there any way we could recess for a minute, look in the transportation code, just to make sure we're okay? Sure. We need to. Let us do that. Herb, will you look with me? Can we go look at the transportation code and make sure that we're doing this right before we say we can do it? Or do you know? I mean, I don't. I don't think. I don't know the answer. I just want to make sure we're okay before. You know what I'm saying? No, I understand. Let's recess just a minute. I'm gonna go look. Okay. I'm gonna take her with me. Motion to recess. Yes, please. I'll make the motion to recess the court. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. We'll just do a quick recess. All right. Just so we don't lead you in the wrong direction. Okay. What can I ask you? What has your outcome been before? Have you? Good job. Go watch it. Um, okay, so uh, back in session on our number 31, what we're looking at is it's in the ETJ. It's not actually in the annex. I mean, you know how we're having problems with things going on in the ETJ anyway, different places right now. I don't think we have 
any authority to really enforce what Kennedy wants to do or anything like that. And if they need to put and name their name, name their roads now, it's going to stop double work, double money. Couldn't find anything in statute that would prohibit us from doing anything mm -hmm. like this. So I don't think I think we can go ahead and allow. Um, sorry, I forgot your name. It's not the name. Mr. Brown to go ahead and um, use the street names for the private roads and the access and stuff. I don't think that's going to be an issue. So. Well, you make I make a motion to approve as number thirty one read. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries five zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you Sorry we made that so technical, but thank you. Let's go back to number five to citizens to be heard. Good morning. At the Commission Court meeting on March 28th, I spoke regarding the law firm of Denton Barrow not having a contract to provide legal services to Carnes County Commission Court. I understand that presiding officer Barbara Shaw has gone to some effort to convince the commissioners that a contract does exist between Carnes County and the law firm of Denton Barrow for legal services. To clarify, I have submitted a hand-delivered request to each of you, the County County Commission, Orange County Commission Court, to produce that contract for contracts to be copied of the agenda and the minutes approving the hiring of Denton Navarro for legal services for Orange County. This request is submitted under the provision of the Texas Open Records Act. The request is also addressed to each of the commissioners, the county clerk, the county auditor, and under the provisions of the Texas Open Records Act, you have 10 days to respond. If no approved contract exists, any further activities with the law firm of Denton and Navarro for any legal services without the express approval of the Carnes County Commission Court is an illegal act. Any further payment of any bills for services not approved by the Commission Court is also an illegal act. Also, all money paid to Denton and Navarro, approximately $70,000, and not approved with no contract for legal services to be recaptured. In addition, Barbara Shaw should be investigated by proper authority for the misappropriation of public funds and gross official misconduct. Presiding officer, commissioners, and any elected official or any appointed official required to bring, is required to bring before the commission's court an official agenda item prior to incurring any of the services or expenditures of funds for Carnes County, just like any other elected or appointed official of the county. In closing, the presiding officer of the commission's court has no special privilege. The presiding officer must, by law, conduct an administrative business before the commission's court to protect public funds. While acting as a presiding officer of the commission's court or acting as a county judge, Barbara Shaw individually does not have the right to outside legal counsel. Carnes County does, but only when a specific need has been approved by the commission's court. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir.
March 12th, we did when the, the treasurer and monitor did not have a report at the end of the month. That was the first of March, did you know that? Yes. That's March 12th. Motion to accept minutes after review. As written. As written. As, written. As presented. Awesome. I say. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries five to move. You'll move to number 19. That's discuss approve, disapprove, funding modification. And this is another geo deal. And all this is is where their pass through fee. It has nothing to do with us, but they need. An ice detention contract. Usually, the modification is there's, there's going to be C, there's a schedule. They increase this specific modification $52,000. It's a funding notification that this, this specific modification is increased. So, we need is a motion. All we need is a motion. Make the motion to approve as written. Number uh, 19. All in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? No. Motion carries 5 0. Let me call one of those people. Sure. So I can have it for Number 20 is the acknowledgement of the Texas Association of Counties risk management pool contact information and allow the county judge to execute. That's the law. The county auditor's office has always been the contact for the insurance through TAC. They just <coughs> the update member contact information sheet, which I enlisted as the pool coordinator and the claims coordinator, as well as the billing coordinator. And Michelle is the workers' compensation coordinator. And all I need is authority of approval and allow Barbara to execute so I can submit it. We just need a motion. I'll make a motion. As written? As written. As written. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Hold on. Lamana, did you bring two? No, I did not. I'm running a copy so I can get Carol one. Okay. Number 21 is to review, approve, disapprove authorization to pay invoice 15821 from Clean Environments in the amount of $537.50 for the asbestos survey at the future jail site. Commissioners of Court approved the services February 12, 2013 at a cost not to exceed $400. So we're short $137.50? For that but that's still out of that jail budget, right? Correct. Right. I mean, it's not an amendment, it's not no, anything No, it's else. just that the action of the court was not to exceed $400, so I did not pay for a bill. That that motion. I'll make the motion to approve as written number 21. Uh, All in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Number 22 is to discuss approve, disapprove payment of invoices 70052 for $11,477.19 and number 7157 in the amount of $2,480.33. To Spiller Custom Hitches. These are additional costs for outfitting the 2013 F-150 pickup and 2013 Chevrolet 110 Dually pickup. Only the base price of the vehicles was budgeted. That's a lot of money. I don't, can I ask you a question? Budget. These are over budget. The only the cost of the vehicles was included in the actual budget. The 11000 plus, Jeff can give you more information on it, but it was an actual bed on the pickup. Uh, and and there's no bed. Two bed. 11000 Right. Can, can I ask, Jeff, can we ask you? Can we ask you why the cost exceeded or why, I mean? At the time when we were uh, getting the truck, the mechanics bed was, uh, they would bid on that because they had those, the bed that's on this truck.